Hey yo, so what we got going on today, we are going to be making a lot of progress on the body swap. That is a El Camino on an all-wheel drive V-Series manual CRV. This is going to now be an all-wheel drive Honda Powers, which is really weird to say. So what we got going on in this video, I want to get the back end addressed. I kind of want to start at the back, make my way forward, get everything in the back knocked out, middle knocked out, engine bay knocked out, then we will get this entire project done and dusted. So I want to get the bed floor put back in it, also need to figure figure out some sort of wheel tubs because the coilover location from the CRV, all of that's going to get a little bit weird, but we're going to get it figured out. We're going to get it knocked out. So let's get started. And now you're watching the summertime rule of thumb that is number one in the ocean while in the ocean is cool, but number one into the ocean while out of the ocean, not cool channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So with the El Camino, Honda Mika, El Chapo, whatever you want to call her, what I want to start to work on today is start to get this rear section a little bit figured out. I need to get it figured out for two reasons. Number one, it needs to look good and number two, it needs to actually be functioning. I need to get rid of this bar back here because this bar is the only thing holding up the body and I don't want that to be the case. I want it to be... That thing just spun around and whipped me. So this over here is going to be an under compartment so that way we can get to the fuel tank that's going to be accessible from the inside. That's actually how the El Camino is set up anyways. Then from here back is going to just be floor. I don't know what's gonna go on over here. We will figure that out when we get there. So let's go ahead and get this all ripped out. And then we'll start to figure out what else we need to cut. Back there is definitely too high for the floor, so all that's going to need to come out. All this needs to get out of the way, obviously. Oh yeah. And this is all just going in the trash. This ridge is too high for the floor to fit because it needs to be at this level. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out, and then we'll see what else is in the way and start fitting these panels, man. So now that we have all of the low points out of the way, I have a clear path from every ridge, left to right, front to back. We shouldn't have anything in the way that can be cut out. Obviously, these guys are going to be in the way a little bit, maybe, possibly. We will just have to see how it goes, but I do not want to cut any of this out because this is the suspension of the CRV and we need to be utilizing that suspension. So the next thing that I want to get into is kind of rebuilding a frame for the bed and this frame is going to serve two purposes. Number one, it is going to be something for the truck bed to sit on and number two, it is going to be something that ties the entire back to the entire back of the CRV. And ultimately at the end of the day, I want this bed to still be functional. So I want to make it nice and beefy so I can throw stuff on it. So I just have some square tubing over here. I have two of them at four feet, two of them at five feet, and two of them at six feet. And my thought was like this piece for four feet, for example, it won't reach anywhere, but I only need my long pieces to make it all the way. Then these pieces can link the longer pieces together, but I also have to make sure that I don't put a bar anywhere that's going to obstruct the lower part of the bed, the bed actually waves. So I need to make sure my bar isn't hitting the upper wave. I need it to catch that lower wave. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to put the bed back in here. So I think the next thing that I wanna do is actually grab the bed itself or the bed floor itself, get it stripped down and get it cleaned. So that way I can kind of see where those highs and lows are. And then once I figure out where those are at, then I can start to figure out where I want to put my frame and actually uh, you know, start to stiffen this thing up.
point, I have the underside of the bed all cleaned out. All of the structure that was under there was connecting the bed to the old frame. None of that applies anymore, so I wanted to just tear it down to bare skin so that way I can start from scratch. Now, originally, in my head, I thought to myself, I'll just get some square tubing, no problem whatsoever. Run it across one side to another, just like this. Connect some braces. All of this bracing will be nice and strong and held together, but that original plan went out the window. And the reason I am saying that is because if you can see right here, this is actually an upper, this is a lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower. Now this edge right here is part of the upper. So now if I ran a bar straight across, that would get in the way of every time that there is a valley. We've got peaks and valleys, uppers and lowers, so that is not going to work. So I had to adjust my plan just a little bit. So if we can see over here, what I got going on is I am using the underside of the bed as a jig. This jig is going to establish our peak and valley height. So this right here that's going straight across is obviously going to be up higher than this one that runs in a valley. Now we are looking at it as a valley, but keep in mind we are on the underside of it. So this is at the right height for this. This is at the right height for that. These guys that run all the way forward, they will start at this bar. They will go in towards the cab. These will go from left and right. The left and rights are going to sit lower. The front to back is going to sit higher, which is the opposite of how it sits right now because this is upside down. So what I'm gonna do right now is get this guy welded together in here because I know for sure it is going to fit if it is welded up in here. So we are kind of establishing our frame. Once we get our frame in the truck, we will then secure the frame as far as structurally going down to what's there already. And I think we have a good game plan going. Was it what I wanted to do initially? No. Is it still going to work? And am I going to be happy with it in the end? Yes. So right now in kind of the theme of this entire build and this entire setup is going crazy with jigs and figuring out stuff to make it as good and as straight as possible. So if you can see, this is kind of the setup. We got my ladder bars. These are not ladder bars, but I'm tacked in right there. I'm tacked in right there. This guy is going across. I have to add this little section right there and that little section right there. Then I have that flat piece clamped on top so that way I can make sure everything remains at the right height, length, width, and everything is going to fall in line because keep in mind, we have a upper, we have a lower valley, and we have a peak. This peak is for this bar right here. So let's go ahead and get that welded in and then eventually, what's up Lola? We're going to be able to get this floor sat in there.
now the bars are really starting to take shape. As you can tell, it is super strong in here, really sturdy. The suspension is the only thing moving now. Before the body was all shaking, but that is not the case anymore. So before I go ahead and put the flat bed on here and reskin this thing, I wanna address everything else that I feel like I'm going to need to address before I cover it up because once it's covered, it's going to be harder to get to. So a couple things. I need to get the wheels to become part of the outside of the car right now. It's kind of a weird gray area. In the end, I'm going to have to do some type of a wheel tub just for aesthetics to make it look good. But as far as functionality goes, we need to stop water from coming up in here. So I'm thinking in that area, this is just going to be super quick, nice and simple, really easy. I'm just going to tack something like this and there wherever I see fit, however I see fit, just to make it where the wheels and whatnot are not going to spray water in there. So I'm just gonna do a couple pieces at a time, spot welded in there. This isn't super structural, even though it is adding structure to what we got going on. You know, this is more of a function thing to make sure water and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get this in there. Maybe I'll discuss exactly how I make these templates as I'm going on with the next ones. But for now, let's just get this one in. through this. I'm not worried about water getting up in here anymore. So the next thing that I want to do, I get this side knocked out and that side knocked out. So what I need to do here is I want to go and protect this metal with an epoxy primer. The outside, we could probably do it when we re-bedline the entire thing, but it's more important that I go ahead and go on the underside and get that addressed because I want to get seam sealer in there to get everything sealed off, watertight and completely protected. And also keep in mind, we can come back with some other things if we needed to like cavity wax or different types of primers or whatever we wanted to do or need to do to feel like we are making it proper. So epoxy primer on this. Then after that, we will drop the bed in here. Then eventually we need to figure out what we are going to do to make this thing look aesthetically pleasing because right now it makes sense what it's doing. It doesn't look good. So when the bed goes on here, we'll figure something out. Let's get that primer going.
Alright, so this is something that is really exciting to see. We got the bed floor going back in here. Now it's cool because the bed floor, everything is making sense for that. As far as the wheel wells go, I'm not seeing what exactly needs to happen. I have a few options, but I will uh I will address that once we get the bed floor in here once and for all. So I went ahead and marked it. I'm going to make all of my holes here and here. This rib from front to back is sitting on a new rail, so I'm gonna make a hole every few inches so that way we can go ahead and rosette weld. It's essentially a spot weld. We're just going to be spot welding this thing back together, which is how it was done from the factory. The CRV was spot welded pretty much everywhere. The El Camino was also spot welded everywhere. So. I think I got a game plan. This needs to come back out, drill all of my holes, prep out all the edges, throw it back in, and the edges on both sides actually need to be prepped. But then we'll throw it back in, get this thing welded out once and for all. And also, too, we are still going to have good access to the fuel tank underneath for the CRV because we have a area under here which the El Camino had anyway. So all of that stuff is kind of staying the same, which is really cool. So. I know what I need to do for this. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as the wheel tub, so let me just go ahead and get knocked out what I already know until we get to the stuff that I don't know. Then I'll have to figure it out when we get there. So now this is all spot welded in there. You have to hit it and say that's not going anywhere or else it will go somewhere. Everybody knows the rule on that. So what I have next is I want to figure out some sort of a wheel tub. Now usually a wheel tub has the wheel on the other side of it. So I think this is kind of weird. It doesn't really look super right. But in the end, hopefully I make it look in a way that I am happy with. So this side over here is kind of close to how it should be, but we still have the coil over top right here. Over there we have the fuel filler that we have to worry about. Now I could just relocate where the fuel filler line is going, but if I cut out all of that extra structure, I'm then losing the structure. So we have to make this side as big to match the other side because I want them to be symmetrical in the end. So what I'm thinking is I have this, the good old tractor fender. This is going to be a base for me. Now two things with this that I don't like. This is too tall and it's too narrow. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut it right down the middle, pull it back a little bit, pull it forward a little bit, and pull it down a little bit. Now let me show you a pretty cool trick on how to find center on something like this. So what I did was I just took this piece of tape, I marked both ends, you can see right there is one end, right there is the other end, and when I put it down, kinda, you can kind of see where this is going. So I marked both ends, that end right there, that end right there, I put it on the table, marked center, then I put it back on this guy, and I drew a straight line down, then we have the perfect center for this little wheel tub thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. We will lengthen it by about, I think four inches seems to be a good number. And then we will, uh, we'll see. Let me just get a little bit ahead after I kind of have it taken shape. I'll talk about it a little bit more. Let's get cutting.
All right, so we got the speed holes really making these start to take shape. Now, I know some of you are saying, why are you punching holes in it? You probably can't leave the holes in it because rain will get inside it and you can't do all that. So I think what I'm going to do, I like the holes there because I like the way that they look. They don't necessarily need to be wide open. I just like it to have something. I've always been a fan of speed holes. I feel like it kind of brings it together. I like the way that it looks and that's the only answer that we need. So I think what I'm going to do is cut out some circular pieces of metal to actually plug these holes shut because I want there to be some shape and some flare and a little bit of pizzazz going on. So that's going to be welded shut but it is still going to have the actual press look on the outside. So it'll still look good. Keep in mind this is all going to get re-bedlined in the end. Now another thing that I have to do, I have to cut out a access panel right in this area because we need to be able to in the end have access to the tops of our coilovers. Now the coilover doesn't need to come up this way, it does not need to be a gigantic hole, but it still needs to be an access hole nevertheless. Just so that way we can get to these nuts, drop these guys out of here. So I want to get those two things knocked out. I want to plug the holes and figure out what I need to do for an access flap. That access flap also needs to be semi watertight because, you know, I don't want water going into here, then it's getting in the cab, then it is going to be a mess. So let's go ahead and get those knocked out, man. We are just knocking out one thing after another. Before we know it, the back section of the Honda Mino, the El Camino, El Chapo is going to be good. Then we are going to keep working our way towards the front, getting it all sound. Then it is going to be a full paint job, which I am really excited for. So right now we got the big boy, the big tire tubs in here. I don't love the fact that it kind of looks like this is a big tire car if you're looking at it from the back where in reality the tires are kind of way down low. It's not like it's crazy tubbed and whatnot. But you have to understand, I have to make things work with my abilities. I would have liked to make it look like how it looked like a factory El Camino where this kind of comes down around and over. But I don't have the abilities or skill set to shape metal and to do all that stuff or the equipment even if I had the skills to do it. So making it look as good as I can with my abilities and tools that I have is what I like to do. So I had to widen it by about four inches for it to fit in everything over here. I just threw a tack right there. I threw a tack on the front side so that way I can kind of bend this four inch sheet of metal around. And right now it is looking pretty good. So I think the next thing that I have to do, I want to grind everything down because we need to eventually get this thing into primer. Do a little bit of body work if needed to kind of just smooth it all over. You want to get as close as you can with just the metal alone. You don't want to just cake body filler all over the entire thing. Even though it's going to look really cool smooth over, I want to make that smooth over happen with just the metal itself. Number one, I need to prime the inside, get this thing tacked in here, then I can start grinding it down, do a little body work, and eventually we want to get this thing in primer. Then the entire engine bay is going to be redone with the bed liner, and in the end I think it's going to look really good.
so at this point now that everything is welded out and looking really good the next step is to go without epoxy primer on there but unfortunately I am out of primer I'm filming right now on the weekends my paint supplier does not open until Monday but either way we've got a lot of work done I'm satisfied with where we are at to make an upload so all I need to do to get these completed is epoxy primer a little bit of body filler then bedline the entire thing so I know you get the picture I will show you that all in the next video then we are going to start to move forward and another thing that I wanted to just wrap up the 1988 LS swapped Honda Accord giveaway all of the numbers went out last week the drawing was this past Monday a winner has been selected and I made contact with the winner and he is super excited to get the car so we are going to get that figured out the rest of the key tags will be sent out this coming week so be looking out for those as well I appreciate everybody who entered in that and we will have another one relatively soon I don't know if it's going to be the Honda Mino maybe something else that I get something else that I build I don't know let me know what you think. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, comment, subscribe. A lot of good progress on this one, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.